Hey everybody, welcome back to Park Attacked. It's been quite a while since I last made a video on this game, I think it's a little over two years now. But I didn't actually stop playing this, I just couldn't really make videos of it, because in the meantime, I've been doing something which I'm, I'm super happy to be able to have done, and uh, I really, really want to thank the creators of the game as well, because it's been loads of fun. So. Uh, a little over a year ago, I got a message from Sebastian, who's the lead programmer on the game. Um, and I'm saying lead, but really the team is quite small. It's it's mostly him and then Garrett doing the art, and then uh, a small group of collaborators working on different parts of the game. But really it's a two-man I mean, core team. But um, I got a message from him, and he was asking me if I wanted to make scenarios for the game. And for me, this was basically a dream come true, because Ever since a super young age, I've been really into these kind of things, and even though I've never really made videos like that on my YouTube channel, I really love the sort of management aspects of theme park games. And for me, this game, and I might not have the most unbiased opinion about that, but for me this game is really filling a niche which no game in recent years has done, which is to focus on that sort of management style, very much classic theme park sim like Roller Coaster Tycoon or Theme Park World. We've obviously got Planet Coaster, but it's much more of a sort of digital sandbox and play tool rather than a linear sort of gaming experience like the old games were. And then there's Roller Coaster Tycoon World, I guess, but let's just agree to forget that game. So there really hasn't been much like this. So when he asked me to make the scenarios, I definitely couldn't say anything else, but hell yeah. So. I've been working on the scenarios a little over a year now, and they're finally done, and I've made a little over half of the scenarios which made their way into the final game, and then I've done some stuff here and there on some of the other ones. So yeah, I've seen all of the scenarios before they got into the game, so I know what all of the maps looks like, uh, look like, and I <laughs> know of course a bunch of stuff about why I made certain scenarios in a certain way. So. I really love to talk about that as well, so that's something that I'll try my best to do wherever I can during this Let's Play as well. But at the same time, I never actually practiced too much the actual gameplay. I always tested the levels a little bit, but I've never played a full campaign. Um, so for me this is, on one hand, very much a new experience, because I'll sort of try to learn throughout the process as well. Well, on the other hand, I think I have a super unique uh, sort of perspective as uh, a person making a let's play of the game in that most of the levels I'll be playing I made myself. So yeah, it'll be an interesting experience, uh, definitely something very new for me. I should also add it's a bit of a new format for me since usually I make these kind of time-lapse videos just for creative stuff in games, but in this case obviously it's much more gameplay focused, so what I'd like to try, and I'd love to hear your feedback on this as well because it's a bit of a new thing for me, but what I'd like to try is to make it partly management focused gameplay real time sort of footage uh, and then partly the time lapse creative sort of experience. So these videos will probably be 50 50 time lapse versus uh, live gameplay and we'll see how that works out. But that's I think the best way to go about doing this because I also don't want to split the different scenarios into different videos. So yeah, without further ado, I think we should go into the campaign and see what this thing actually looks like. Because obviously you can also play this game sandbox, but for now I really want to show off the campaign. Uh, which is also really what the full release of this game is all about. So we start off with this map over here. It's kind of like a, a Mario map, I suppose. And that you have to unlock new places and you sort of travel over there. Um, but it's also obscured by all of these clouds, so we don't really see yet where we're gonna go. There's just some names here and there and uh, slight spoilers, but that aside, I, I don't even know the order of all of the different campaigns. I just sort of gave them a general idea of which were the easy and which were the medium and which were the difficult levels. In any case, I think it's probably good to start off with the tutorial. That's not really a campaign, but for those of you who haven't seen this game before, it's probably a good starting point. So. Here's Loopy Lagoon, it's one of the levels that I made, and it was specifically made to also be the tutorial level. So it's sort of halfly done theme park, uh, it has some empty areas over here, 
but then it has all of these roller coasters and stuff showing the game off in the rest of the park. So for those of you who are uh, familiar with the sort of classic theme park sim game like Roller Coaster Tycoon or Roller Coaster Tycoon World, I think this game in general will be very familiar territory. We have some coasters, some rides, some paths. It's from an isometric perspective and everything's placed on a grid. So very much harks back to the aesthetics of those classic games while at the same time updating it quite a bit. So obviously the graphics are a bit more up to date. And there are some other changes that I quite like, like the uh, the roller coaster builder, even though it might have a bit of a learning curve, allows for very flexible and smooth uh, coaster layouts, so that's pretty cool. In any case, I don't want to dwell too long on the tutorial, so I just want to show off some things that I think will set this game apart from some previous games in the genre. And I think most importantly, um, there's the uh, sort of behind the scenes aspect of the game. Now I'm not going to do any of the lessons from the tutorial over here, but what the behind the scenes one is basically about is how you'll need to care also for everything that guests don't see in your park and you'll have to manage the sort of logistics behind running a theme park. So uh, over here these paths that we can see are um, actually blocked off from guests, so this is for staff only. And then over here there's a staff room as well as a training room. And um, this over here is a depot where all of the trash and all of the deliveries will be placed. So then we'll need some staff that is going to bring all of this stuff to the, to the, uh, the shops and stalls and vending machines throughout the park. But not just that, the game really wants you to hide these as well as you can. So if you look at a lot of real life theme parks, especially uh, Disney parks do this really well for instance, uh, all of that sort of backstage stuff is very well hidden and invisible for most of the guests. And um, this is also something that you have to try your best to do in the game as well. So as we go along making all of these levels in the scenarios, we'll have to build these sort of back end systems to supply all of the deliveries and stuff while sort of covering it up for the guests so they can stay in their immersion of whatever the theme of the park is that we're working on. It's gonna be interesting to see how that goes, but for now I think it would be a good idea to start with a little bit of time lapse perhaps over there. So we have Maple Meadows over here, a large clearing on the frontiers of a maple forest, the perfect place to build your first park from the ground up. Easy going guests, relaxed weather, what more could you ask for? And then the goal is to have 200 guests in your park. What's also noteworthy, I think, is the optional goal to have like all of the, the non-optional goals completed by the end of December year one, which basically means that this game doesn't really have a time limit. And this is something that I talked about quite a bit with Sebastian. He was really adamant on not having one since if you look at games like Roller Coaster Tycoon, if you didn't make that strict time limit, all of your progress would more or less be thrown away or you'd have to very carefully and specifically keep saves from different times during your, your playthrough of the uh, scenario to sort of recover what you had, but it, it's very much a losing state and he didn't really want to have that in the game, so you can have all the time that you need to complete the goals, but if you're a completionist, you can always complete them before a given time, uh, so if you really want to 100% the game, you're gonna have to uh, strictly adhere to these time rules. Anyway, let's go into Maple Meadows. And I should also say, I think this is one of the scenarios which Sebastian made himself. Um, so this is not actually one I made, but it's it's quite simple. It's very much just a, a scenario to come to terms with how the game works. And we just get an empty field to pretty much fill in how we like it. Now I propose that I start to work on some rides and some scenery and stalls in a short time lapse. And then afterwards I'll come back and we can start managing it. Alright, so now that we're in fast forward mode, I'm going to try my best to pay attention and kind of talk a little bit about what I decided to do and why. So basically, my general idea for this park was to make a very generic but rustic looking kind of family owned small park. So it's not super well themed and all the scenery should be quite cheap. But at the same time, it sort of has to have a very uh, charming and classic sort of atmosphere to it. I think a major inspiration for me in this regard is Tripstrill in Germany, 
which, even though it might sound weird, is one of my most, like, top bucket list parks, I would say. I really, really, really want to go there. It's, it's something that not a lot of people share, I suppose, because it's not very well known, and it's a very small park, and it doesn't really have any major attractions, but it's it's just, it has a super cool atmosphere, and I'd really like to visit it one day. In any case, that's the sort of thing that I'm going here, um, that I'm going for here. I think it also kind of fits the, the layout of the map and the sort of limitations that we're getting in this scenario. Because for one, the map is just really quite simple. It's a very g generic theme that could work for any kind of temperate region, be it somewhere in Europe or in uh, the US somewhere. Um, so I think it could work like that, and also we don't really get too intense rides in this scenario. We start off with just a spinning coaster and a kitty coaster, and obviously we can research some more stuff, but being one of the first parks, we don't really get anything special or expensive rides or anything like that. So I think the stuff that we get here also more or less fits the theme that I'm going for. So how I decided, how I decided to start this out is uh, with a carousel. I feel like in a level like these, I, I just always want to start off with a carousel. I always did that in the Forest Frontiers in Roller Coaster Tycoon. I think a lot of people did the same. Um, so it just felt fitting to make that the first ride. And then I also wanted to make a small food court. And the way I thought it'd be fun to go about doing that is to put some buildings for all the stalls inside. So that's kind of well hidden and the guests don't have to see all the backstage areas. And then outside, Put a little beer garden kind of thing. I am trying to make a sort of rustic German town look with the scenario, so I think that more or less fits the theme and it makes for a, a good entrance into the rest of the park, I think. Now this is going to be a very small park, so um, I'm not going to do too much with this. The map is quite small and then the goal of uh, the guest count that we need to reach is also quite small. So I'm gonna try and scale everything accordingly. So this is just a very small food court with two stalls and a few benches and all of the paths are also uh, quite narrow and everything will be built quite close together. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna really be needing the whole map for this given how compact everything that I'm building so far is. I don't think I'll be filling up the entire area that I have here. But yeah, I, I, I think that shouldn't necessarily matter. Uh, there's always the idea of, you know, having to fill in the entire map of a scenario. But if it works with less, it works with less, I suppose. Oh, and obviously I need to build the toilet as well. Um, <laughs> I think there's a bit of a... It's almost like a running gag where whenever I do my series in Planet Coaster or even back in the Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 times, I always forgot to build toilets in my park. Uh, but obviously it's a bit of a, a different ball game here given that it's a scenario and I do have to maintain the park from a gameplay perspective as well So the next ride is going to be the teacups just Such a classic ride something that you don't really want to miss out on when you get a small park like this And it's always a nice opportunity to also build a little building around it very often these things will have some kind of cover on top of them and I actually don't know yet what the climate is like in this park. I suppose that it's quite temperate and quite easy to work with given that it's the first scenario. Um, but it always works to put a cover over stuff and have covered uh, queues like I'm doing over here and cover up your flat rides. And even these sort of indoor food courts, like anything you can make indoors is just a big advantage for a theme park. And then I also wanted to Spruce up the area with some path elements and those lights over there, which I really like. I think I'll be using the lights and the flags quite a lot in different parks. It's just a really easy way to make everything a little bit more festive. And finally, here's the uh, what I think is called the wipeout. I'm not entirely sure, um, but it's that sort of rotating, uh, also very gentle ride that sort of goes up and down a little bit. I think you can already tell that most of the rides are going to be quite gentle over here. Um, which I think makes sense. I think unless the uh, objective is to start out with very thrilling rides because the guests want very thrilling rides, it always makes sense to build up the gentle rides first because they are sort of a first necessity. And 
if you've got a few of those, you can move to making uh, the uh, more thrill demanding guests happy. But I think from a realistic standpoint, getting the gentle rides in first is a decent strategy. Although from a game perspective, it might not be the best because you can't ask for a lot of money for those. In any case, um, I'm trying to balance out these two worlds of realism and gameplay over here. So yeah, that's basically why I did it this way. But yeah, that's it for this time lapse. So I'll go back into the real time part and show you around a little bit. All right, so here we have a nice little start to the park and I can see the crates are already being delivered. So that's quite good. Uh, one of the biggest advantages I think of this game is that you can actually pause the game while you're building stuff and that's not really true for all of the games in the genre. I think some of the past ones uh, sort of try to keep the time restriction um, by also not allowing you to build when the game is paused. But in this case you don't really have a limit in terms of your, your final goal for when you can achieve it. So you can pretty much pause the game whenever you want to, so I think it'd be a good idea to just pause the game when I'm doing some of the detailed scenery, but then when we're actually working on the park, I think we can run it in the background. It looks a bit nicer as well. Um, now what I am getting so far, I think it would be... So I'm not actually sure what, what's better here. If I should make the park entirely free and then raise the prices of the rides as much as possible, or if I should just do both at the same time. I really sort of have to get a feeling for the uh, sort of financial picture of the game. That said, I know Sebastian told me one day that you can pretty much raise your prices to 1.5 times the excitement rating uh, divided by 10. Um, so that's not actually too much of a mathematical calculation there. So it means that this should theoretically be allowed to go to 3.5 in terms of how much the ride costs. So I'm going to try that. Um, see if that actually works um yeah more or less because half of this uh would be 11.5 and then if you add to that that's that's pretty much 3.5 we'll see if that works uh then for the teacups um okay so okay f not quite four i'll but I i'm gonna ask four for it anyway let's see if people want to pay that money and then for this one oh gosh I can raise the price quite a bit on this one. I'm gonna start with five and see how the people respond to that. Um, so yeah, I really, need, I really still need to get a feeling for it. On the other hand, I don't think this scenario will punish me too much for having sort of low prices where people are still willing to pay more of it. Um, but probably that'll come into play in some of the later scenarios. Definitely seems like we need to build some more intense rides. And speaking of that, there isn't really anything super intense in here. We've got a spinning coaster, but really that's not all that intense either. Um, I'm not sure what the... Okay, so this would be intensity of 3.4, or 34 actually. Um, and this is 32, so it's not that much of a difference. So if I want to have an intense ride, I think I should really go for a spinning coaster somewhere. And I don't know what the pre-built versions of these are. Have I built this one day before? Because, I don't know, I, re I don't remember. I've had this game for too long. Um, but yeah, it would be nice to probably build a small spinning coaster somewhere. I'm feeling like I could sort of take a corner over here to do that. Good, and I should probably hire a research team as well. The way that it works over here is um, you can hire multiple teams, I believe, if you can. Um, I don't think that's true for... Actually, it would be highly expensive. but. You can hire teams and you can basically have them work on certain types of rides. So in this case, I'd love them to ride uh, to work on thrill rides. And then you can give them a monthly budget. I think $200 is just about fine. Um, means that I'll get a ride eventually, but I'm not losing too much of my money every month. Uh, speaking of losing money, I am losing money at the moment, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, not entirely sure where this is happening. Uh, so yeah, lots of construction in the last month, but then my operation is also not that great. Um, and a lot of that is building maintenance, I actually didn't think about that. In any case, I think it'd be interesting to start a little coaster over here and see how that goes. Alright, so I'm gonna try to keep an eye on realism here, so that means partly I'm gonna try to have some employee paths and backstage area for this coaster. 
Um, but also I'm trying to make it in a sense that it realistically uh, could be built by the company that builds them in real life. So this coaster in game is based on the real life Gerstlauer spinning coaster made by a German company. And um, what's fairly typical about it is that the, f the uh, seats on the coaster face each other. So where with uh, most spinning coasters, you're kind of sitting toward the outside. Uh, here you can actually see the people who are riding it together with you, which is uh, kind of funny, um, but not too important when thinking about the layouts. Basically, these coasters often have very curvy layouts with lots of transitions. Uh, and unlike uh, very fairground type spinning coasters, these ones do have banked curves and are actually quite smooth. So that's also the type of layout that I'm trying to build. And um, realistically also, it's not even really spinning that much since you don't have those tight twists and turns, uh, which some of these things do feature, but in this case, I thought it would be more fitting to just go with a sort of standard family type kind of a spinning coaster. So it doesn't really do too much, but at least it's, uh, realistically smooth to a degree I suppose. Uh, what I should also note is that there's lots of block breaks in the layout which is basically because you can't really realistically put many trains in the station you need those block breaks to divide the coaster into blocks and every train or every little car can really only uh, occupy one block at a time so um, all of these blocks just allow for more cars on the track and that's also why there's lots of parts in the middle of the track where it just sort of stops for a second, goes into a break, and then it's done. Uh, speaking of done, by the way, the layout is basically done at this point. I tried to do this quite quickly, and at this point it is time to move into the scenery part of the experience. I just decided to make the colors of the track red and the colors of the supports brown, which is a very sort of standard, generic, rustic color scheme that I think fits the coaster quite a bit. I decided to add a small transfer track over here, although I do realize this is not a typical spinning coaster transfer track. I believe usually these things have more of a switch track kind of mechanism, but I didn't really have the, uh, <laughs> the skills or time or uh, no, actually more or less also space to do that kind of thing. So I decided to just quickly do it like this. But that said, if anybody... Uh, you know, if you have any feedback on how I'm building stuff or how I could make it better or more realistic, of course, by all means, uh, please comment and tell me about anything that I'm doing poorly and I should improve on. Because that's honestly also what I need to improve. Now the scenery for this coaster is really just quite simple. A bunch of foliage and then a simple station. I don't want to go too far on the theming. Uh, lots of these sort of small family owned rustic charming parks tend to not really put too much uh, scenery behind well the the areas where you can directly see it from the paths so even if they'll have very charming and well themed restaurants and stations and stuff the rides themselves are typically not that themed so just a bit of foliage here and there should more or less do the trick i think and then there's a, a nice little area where the the path sort of comes out and interacts with the coaster as it goes through the helix over there. As for the station, I decided to just make it a very simple sort of blocky station. I think this is something that also uh, came to mind during uh, Geekism's Let's Play of Park Tech, which I wholeheartedly recommend by the way, he's doing a great Let's Play of this game and I'm super happy to see him play some of the scenarios that I made and see his reaction to it. But something he also noted is, you know, sometimes you just need to make some slightly ugly and boring buildings because realistically that's just what a lot of theme parks will build, especially if they don't have the budget to uh, do much more than that. And I'm sure that the park that I'm building over here would pretty much be the same way. So the station is just quite simple and functional. In any case, with that said, it is time to move back and see how the coaster is doing. Oh god, what's quite embarrassing is that I didn't actually finish the track correctly because it still has like missing track pieces, uh, which it doesn't like. So I'm gonna have to remove some of these. And I think, no, actually there's still something in there, isn't there? God, how am I gonna get there actually? I'm gonna have to remove some of this. Yeah, there we go. So there's still that track piece of there. And now I should be able to connect this. Yeah, there we go. 
So I suppose I'm gonna have to build a different coaster to actually finish the end of that. But let me take this opportunity to fix some other stuff. So this should be 15 kilometers an hour. And I wanna trim this, but only to 20, just to make sure that it's gonna make the next one because it's actually dangerously slow over here. Um, and I'll trim this one too right now so we can test this now and pretty much run the coaster. But before I do that, or actually while I do that, I suppose, I'm going to just build some new ones. I wonder if that does add to my monthly costs. So you know what I should maybe do? Maybe I should try and build a fence as though it were a uh, a door of this building. I mean, that doesn't quite work, but I think the idea is decent. I should probably look for some better fences to put in there. But um, yeah, it, it might be a good idea to not just put coaster track everywhere because that stuff is uh, it's kind of expensive and it might become a lot of effort to do that every time. So for now, I think I'm just gonna put this down here as a sort of door mechanism. That more or less works, but <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to have to consider that, actually. For now, though, the coaster seems to be working all right, although it is kind of getting stuck in places. I wonder if I can put block brakes. Uh, maybe I'll just... I'll, I'll replace this one with block brakes. Let me try that. I don't know if it's a good idea, but I think it won't get stuck on there because there is a curve after it. Um... But, yeah, I just want to try it. I just want to make sure that I have more space for the cars to sort of wiggle around. Um, because when you do block brakes like this, uh, you always need to make sure that you've got some space left so they don't have to stop on every single block brake. Which, if you've ever been on a coaster like this, it is really annoying if the car stops on every block brake. So, I would like to pr actually uh, defend against that. So it seems like everything is clear and they are running pretty well, yep. Every time one of the block breaks is cleared, so that's really good actually. So we can pretty much just keep it up like this. I would like to recolor maybe the cars, because they look a bit weird at the moment. I think just some dark, rustic wood color should work. There we go. And let's open it up. Now I didn't actually think about a name, but I'll, I'll just I'll just put the, the the first thing that comes to mind every time for the rides. For some reason, this thing reminds me of a a ladybug. I guess it could be. I don't know. Let's just go for it. So there we go. Ladybug is open. I think the rest is fine. Although that said, there is some vomit on the parts. And as you can see, if the people walk through it, they just end up spreading all of the vomit. So I definitely want to hire another janitor to keep everything clean. Looks like over here it's all fine. No vandals or anything, which is also really good because vandals tend to destroy pretty much everything in this game. And I need to hook up the queue also. <laughs> I should not forget that. Uh, let's see. I want to... Wait, that's not what I tried to do. I need to copy this color. There we go. I think I'm just going to do it like this for... Yeah, for time, or rather for space saving sake, and see how people like the ride. And there we go. Looks to me like a bunch of happy guests. Unfortunately, I forgot to raise the price though, so I'm gonna have to raise that to, I think, 6.50. They'll be, they'll be able to at least pay this amount, and I'm pretty sure I can go over that as well. Uh, if anybody who's watching this is a pro at this game, uh, please let me know how much I can like try to push these prices. I know you can pretty much just listen to the guests and what they are saying about it, but I don't really want to rely on that. Although I can eventually if I want to. But yeah, I think this pretty much works out. And there we go. It doesn't crash. It doesn't get stuck anywhere. And it looks pretty neat. I think it fits into the park quite well. Now I think for the future expansions, I don't want to move over here because I'm already at 130 guests and I just need to get 200 and it's already October so I don't think I'll make the optional goal then again I don't really feel the need to um, but I will try to fill in this area with some different rides and it's a good thing that I've got the uh, enterprise being researched at the, or actually completed 
And I can get some go cards. That said, I'm not sure if I have enough time to actually get this, but that would be quite nice. And I'm making money. It's just a very small amount of money, but I'm not losing money anymore, so that's pretty good. Technically, I'm running a profit. So let's just keep going and see what we can make of it. All right, here we are in the last time lapse section for today. And I'll more or less be finishing the entire park. I think I've got a pretty good base, a pretty good foundation for the park with what I have right now and just a little bit more of scenery and some flat rides and a little kiddie coaster at the end should more or less finish it up. I do realize that I'm already pretty much en route to finishing the park when it comes to reaching 200 guests. I'm pretty sure if I just leave it running now, I am gonna be able to reach that goal. But that said, I wanted to pause the game just to make sure that I had enough time before I finished the scenario to work on some more scenery and make this into a neat little park. So my first idea was to put a topspin over here since I really didn't have a super intense ride yet, the spinning coaster didn't turn out as intense as I hoped. So this should more or less fix that issue. I really like these rides, I think they're one of the best flat rides to place and they're always very much uh, a fun flat ride to sort of try to feature into the scenery of the park. Uh, when it comes to flat rides, not all of them tend to interact so much with the scenery of the park. A lot of flat rides are just kind of very generic. Maybe they have their own little theming or color scheme that fits the park, but it's not like you really have to integrate them into the surrounding scenery. And with top spins, you very often see that they kind of get their own pedestal almost. Like they're a sort of show to watch and you can build the paths around them in such a sense that people can stand or sit around them and see the, the cycle go as a lot of people will not want to ride a topspin either because they're too afraid or because those things just make you super nauseous. So it's always a great flat ride to build some scenery around and build something around it so that people can sit down and, and have a look at it even if they're not riding it themselves. So one of my favorite flat rides also, from an in-game perspective, it's one of the cheapest, like, intense things that you can place for a thrill ride. It's honestly quite good, and it should more or less make all of the thrill-seeking guests pretty happy. Now, I moved into the back of the park to finish on the last part, and the idea was, you know, this is a park that sort of grows over time, so the area closest to the entrance would be the oldest, and this area, which is much further from the entrance, I wanted to make it a little bit different from the rest of the park to kind of make it look as if it's more of a recent expansion. Maybe not super recent, but at the very least make it slightly different. So going for some different pavements and pavement colors here, and generally also a little bit more of an expensive look to it, I think. Um, so I'll be getting to that in a second, but I decided to put a building at the end of this little street right in front of this small square with a pavilion in the middle, which is going to be the new food court and it's going to look quite a bit more expensive and a bit nicer than the existing food court that we have at the start of the park. Then there's also a bunch of flat rides. I decided to fit like a, a sort of parameter path to build within, to give myself a bit more of a challenge and to have that sort of backstage area. In hindsight, I really don't think I'll be doing that for all of the parks since this made things quite a bit more difficult and from a gameplay perspective, it was kind of annoying since a lot of employees just ended up walking there. But for the sort of park layout, it was interesting to have this uh, limitations by myself. So everything had to be quite compact. So even though I'm putting a pretty good amount of flat rides here and also a small roller coaster. Everything has to be really close together. And I think that resulted in a, a pretty good realistic layout for this area. Anyway, so I placed a Enterprise and a Twister ride and this is the food court building. So as you can see, it's quite a bit more extravagant than the existing old wooden shed that functioned as a food court. And I was sort of debating whether I wanted to do this or, or not, but I ended up doing it anyway because I couldn't stop myself. I just built this little tower to make the building look a little bit nicer. It doesn't really have a function, it's really just scenery and it's almost like Disney-esque scenery, but I really wanted to try some of these pieces. Also because I haven't played with some of these scenery elements very much yet and a lot of these new elements like 
the sort of stepwise gable pieces that I'm using for the front of the facade and the rooftop spire. These are all new scenery pieces, or at least relatively new, from one of the newest uh, Parkitect updates, so I haven't had time to try them yet, so this building was more or less also just uh, a quick try to see how some of the new pieces are. And I'm super glad with it actually, I think a spire piece is a rooftop piece which the game has been missing for quite a while too, so to see something like that in the game now is super cool. Anyway, there's the small kitty coaster. It's not much, but I decided it would pretty much fit very neatly into this side of the park. And it's very loosely themed as well. Um, but I think just putting an airplane or, or some kind of prop in the middle of the kitty coaster seems to be quite a theme for a lot of theme parks, especially theme parks like this. Uh, I think the, the best example that I've ever been on is probably the dog fart coaster in Denmark. You can look this up, by the way. This is a real thing. In in a park called Bon Bonland, they have a kitty coaster with a dog shitting right in the middle of the coaster. And yes, this is a PG-13 video, so I suppose I have one slur that I can use per video. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that, that's one of the weirdest examples, but usually they do this with some kind of other objects. I know in Walibi Holland, they just have a, a little train in the middle of the kitty coaster track. Anyway, that's something you can always do with a kitty coaster, I think. Just put some kind of object in the middle and call that the theme. And with that said, this area is more or less finished. I decided to add some more foliage to it, keeping it quite small and a little bit smaller than the rest of the park because it would be a sort of newer part of the park. But aside from that, there's not too much to really say about it. Just put some shrubs and trees everywhere and everything looks a little bit uh, nicer, I suppose. Anyway, with that said, we've come at the end of the time-lapse, so let's jump back into real time and see what the park looks like. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we did it. Although it went a little bit quicker than I expected, so I wasn't on time for the confetti and the grand announcement. But I've got 200 guests in my park, so we're pretty much all done now here. That said, of course, the time-lapse doesn't really show off the park as much as a bit of a real-time overview would, I suppose. So yeah, the, what the final park ended up looking like. It's quite simple and I really didn't end up using all of the space that I have. There's still a bit of empty space left over here, but overall I'm really happy with it actually. There's a bunch to improve, especially from a gameplay perspective, like this entire sort of employee path alongside the outskirts of the park. While it would technically make sense if it were coming from a realistic standpoint, it doesn't really help. I would probably be better off connecting that to a path like right around over here, especially so all the employees don't end up walking around here. Um, but that aside, I'm yeah, I'm pretty happy with it, and actually quite like the layouts of the spinning coaster. I wasn't so sure in the beginning, but it's sort of grown on me over time. So yeah, I'm actually uh, quite glad with how that turned out. Overall. It's more or less what I was going for, I suppose. A very rustic, family-oriented park with just a few rides, probably sort of in its beginning stages. The idea was also to partly, you know, make it like this area is a little bit older and this area is a little bit newer, and I think overall that sort of makes sense. So yeah, I'm quite happy with it, and I think I've got some stuff to take with me in the next scenario. I do want to try to go for a slightly different style in every scenario that I build, just to uh, keep it a bit challenging for myself and to see how I can sort of fit the build into the terrain that the scenario gives you. I also love how you can tell that even after a little bit of learning the gameplay, I've got so many more guests than 200. So the whole strategy of like putting the game on pause and then unpausing it once everything is built and just letting the guests flow in actually works quite well. Although I do have to say I should probably theme a little bit less for the upcoming scenarios because I ran out of money quite quickly and then it, and I ended up taking a, a loan which might not be too bad but when the scenarios get harder I should really try not to rely on that. Anyway I believe if I now click on... oh anyway that's fine but a good message actually. If I now click on quit and get out of here, I think if I end up in the uh, main screen, I should be getting a bit of a notification. Ah, there we go. All right, awesome. So then we get a little trophy, which is just this sort of special building 
which sort of drops down on the map to let you know that you've completed this scenario. And I think you also get the blueprints. So this will also just, well, make the entire world map a little bit of a happier place with all these trophies showing you what you've done already. And for me, it was actually a lot of fun because at some point I was asked if I could make the maps in such a way that there would be a sort of trophy to work with or otherwise go back to the maps which didn't have a building which could work as a trophy and add them in there. So for me, being a big fan of weenies, I was actually a lot of fun. So I'm actually kind of curious to see what all the trophies will look like in uh, the entire world map since even though I've made the majority of them, I haven't quite seen them on the world map yet. Anyway, the next scenario is Chanute Airfield. I guess you pronounce it this way, which is a, a small abandoned airfield, but that is something for the next episode. I hope you guys liked this episode. Let me know what you think of the formats and what you think of the game, of course, and I will hopefully see you guys next time. Bye-bye.